Hey folks, Scott Walters, welcome back to the Bulletproof Garage. It's a beautiful January day here in South Texas and we're at a cattle ranch, all right? I'm here with my buddy Will and my technical advisor, Craig, and his lovely wife, Helen, and we are trying to resurrect this Cat D7 Dozer, this yellow lump sitting right behind me. And this is our third effort, all right? We got it started on the last episode, but we weren't able to move it. So on this episode, hopefully we'll get this old girl to move out of this hole where it's been sitting for about the last 10 years. Now check out the description below for links to the prior videos, all right? Okay, folks, so we're burning daylight, so let's get started. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I want to do this morning is get some oil in the winch. So the winch has its own oil supply and it actually turns even when it's not engaged. So it's turning internally. So um, what you don't want to have is it dry and rusty and just really wearing itself out, even if you're sitting here idling. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get the fill cap off and we'll get a few gallons in. All right. I've already hit everything with croil, so uh, hopefully it's ready to go. Oh yeah, yeah, that came off easily. Okay, that goes there. That should be fine. All right, turns out it wasn't completely empty. Um, I got about three quarters of a gallon in and um, it started overflowing. So now uh, I've got a little bit of an oil spill to clean up. Okay, still at the back of the tractor here. So I'm between the fuel tank and the winch um, and I'm in this area right here. And this is the steering clutch booster and it takes 30 weight oil. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that out. All right, that was easy. Okay, well, I can't see any oil in there, so we're gonna go ahead and top it off. All right, I think that's it. I can see the level of oil is all the way up here near the top, so we're going to go ahead and cap that off. All right, moving on. All right, at this point, I've checked the critical fluids and topped them off, and we're going to go ahead and see if the tractor will start. And if it starts, we're going to let it run and warm up a little bit. And then we're going to shut it down and try to start it up in gear. So it's about to get interesting. Okay, folks, now in the category of things you shouldn't do at home, I'm going to start the tractor up in gear, at least attempt to. So I've got it in first gear and the direction selector in forward. Uh, the problem, of course, is I can only go about uh, 20 feet before running into the landowner's fence. So let's hope that doesn't happen. So here we go.
Well, how about that? I mean, she moved out of that hole where she's been sitting for about the last 10 years without any trouble. I mean, uh, she moved in reverse fine. The steering clutches were working great. Didn't really take anything to free them up. I mean, they were just, they just started working. So, um, the only thing we don't know about right now is whether the blade is working or actually we know it's not working because um, I can't get the lever to move. So I think it's probably just the linkage is frozen up or something. Uh, I don't think it's a hydraulic issue. I think it's more of a linkage issue. Um, but, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start it up in forward gear this time and see if we can move around a little bit in forward. Uh, now, I'm still not able to shift gears when the tractor is stopped and the engine is running because the clutch is still dragging, all right? So the clutch brake is inoperable and in order to have a real an operating machine, we'd have to get that addressed. So right now, in order to move from forward to reverse or to shift from first gear to second gear to third all the way to fifth, I've got to stop the tractor and kill it. So uh, not optimal, but at the very least, we know she runs and we know she moves. All right, moving on. I think this is where she's going to sit for now. We're going to check some fluid levels now that we're on uh, sort of level ground and contemplate our next move. All right, folks, uh, what's going on here is we got a lot of blow by. <laughs> it's just making it painful to add oil while the engine's running. So I'm just going to put a gallon or so in and then crank it up and then check the level. Oh. Okay, if y'all saw what was happening, uh, I was getting a lot of blow by out of the oil fill here and it was just blowing the oil back up in my face so uh, what we're gonna what i did is i just had, went ahead and shut the engine off and i'm gonna fill it with um, the engine off and uh, my technical advisor craig tells me that if it's about an inch over the full level with the engine shut off we're good to go so that's what we're going to do thank you craig All right, and so there is the full line right here, and about an inch above is exactly where we are. So we're gonna call that good. Uh, unfortunately, um, she was a little thirsty. Uh, I think we put about, oh wow, uh, almost four gallons in, <laughs> and so it needed a little bit of oil. Um, having said that, the oil pressure was good while we were running it, so I mean, it wasn't running dry, but it was definitely low. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and check the final drives for oil. Um, so we've got one here and one on the other side. It takes 90 weight. All right, no oil evident there. So 
I've topped off the final drives. Both of them took about two gallons of 90 weight, so let's go ahead and get those buttoned back up. <laughs> And yeah, if you notice, uh, so one of them's got a hex drive and one of them's got a square drive. Not sure why, but. All right, folks, that is it for this episode. But what a fantastic day. I mean, we're here in Texas, early January, and I am burning up in this denim shirt. I mean, it's 70 something degrees here. Uh, the sun's out. It's been a gorgeous day. We got this old 65 year old tractor moved from the hole where it's been sitting for about 10 or 12 years. And not only that, it is driving and operating again. Uh, and before I forget, a shout out to all of y'all who have provided advice. There's too many to list and a, a big thanks to Will, my buddy, uh, who's running the camera and helping out with the wrenching and Craig who came along to help with the technical expertise. Okay, folks, now it's time for the audience participation portion. All right, I'm talking to you, okay? I need to know what you think I should do with this old tractor. Should I buy it? If I buy it, how much should I pay for it? What's too much to pay for it? All right, should I run away and uh, hopefully never to see it again? I, I don't know, or is there something, uh, is there a, a happy medium there somewhere? So post up a comment, even if you don't know anything about these old Caterpillar tractors. I'm curious to hear what you think I should do, okay? Now, finally, before I sign off, two requests, one, please hit the subscribe button, all right? And subscribe to the channel. And two, please poke around on the channel. I've got several dozen videos up and I guarantee that you will find something else that you like. Okay, folks, until next time, signing off with the Bulletproof Garage.